There are several diseases and health conditions that can affect our immune system. Autoimmune diseases, like multiple sclerosis or Crohn's disease, have an overactive immune system whereby the body actually attacks its own cells. Allergies are also a disorder of the immune system that causes excessive activation of white blood cells like basophils, causing an extreme inflammatory response. There are also underactive immune disorders. The most well-known is the Human Immunodeficiency Virus, or HIV, the deadly virus that causes AIDS. Viruses are unable to reproduce on their own, and require a host cell to multiply. Viruses target only the cells that are suitable for it, and in the case of HIV, the suitable cells are the T cells. The CD4 receptors on the T cell match protein complexes on the virus. These complexes are composed of two glycoproteins, an extracellular GP120 and a transmembrane GP41. When the virus approaches the T cell, the GP120 binds to the CD4 receptors. This process is called attachment. This promotes further binding to a co-receptor. The binding results in a conformational change of GP120. This allows GP41 to unfold and insert the hydrophobic terminus into the cell's membrane. GP41 then folds back on itself, drawing the virus closer to the cell, facilitating the fusion of their two membranes. The viral membrane enters the host cell, bursting open and releasing two viral RNA strands along with three replication enzymes, integrase, protease, and reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase begins the reverse transcription of the viral RNA. It has two catalytic domains, the ribonuclease H active site and the polymerase active site. This is where the single-stranded viral RNA is transcribed into an RNA-DNA double helix. Ribonuclease H breaks down the RNA. The polymerase then completes the remaining DNA strand to form a DNA double helix. Integrase then cuts off small sections of the nucleotides creating two sticky ends. Integrase then transfers the DNA into the cell's nucleus where it is integrated into our own genome. Our genome will then contain the genetic information of HIV. Activation of the cell induces transcription of proviral DNA into messenger RNA. The viral RNA migrates into the cytoplasm. This is where the virus begins to build. Some of them need to be processed by the viral protease. Protease cuts proteins into smaller proteins, an essential part in producing a successful virus. Two viral RNA strands and the replication enzymes come together. They are covered with core proteins forming a capsid. The capsid leaves the cell with new viral and host proteins. The virus matures and goes on to infect other cells. 
HIV replicates billions of times per day, destroying the immune cells and eventually causing the disease known as AIDS.